Hi, Lauren. Hi, Frank. <laughs> uh, thanks again for, for taking the, the time to, to join me today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk. I, I wanted to talk to you about what was happening in, in Gaza, but more especially, in a way, the role of, um, of artists, um, you know, musicians, you know, actors, in, uh, in a way, using their voices to raise awareness um, about what's happening on the ground. And uh, you've been very vocal on, uh, on what's, you know, what's been happening in, in Gaza for the last nearly 10 months now. Um, but before, in a way, I ask you, I wanted to ask you, because I'm, I'm really interested in like, people's journey. And for me, Palestine is such a, a tricky topic. You know, it's like really the litmus test for anyone you know, mm. working for social justice. Mm. That I'm, I'm, I'm always interested on how, on people's journey, right? How people got there, how people became or felt they had to become vocal on the issue. So I was wondering, what, what was your journey in regards to Palestine? I think that, you know, ironically, I first became aware of Palestine through Rihanna. I know that, that sounds crazy, but she posted about Palestine like, I think it was 2021 or um, a little earlier than that. Even I think it was Sheikh Jarrah that was going on and mm. there was like a whole protest going on. And um, I'm very social justice oriented. I, I'm a very honest person. And so for me, like human rights and social justice and to me, they're all interconnected and interwoven uh, of the human experience, especially as a global community at this point. So you know, she had posted about it and I was like, Gaza, like, what's that about? So I did my own research, of course. And, um, you know, back then I got a little bit into it. I just did maybe one post on my story in support of, um, you know, the Palestinian people who were being obliterated at that time during their yeah. um, peaceful protests. And I was like, this is wrong, obviously. So I, you know, did that, but I didn't really dive all the way in until October 7th um, when when that happened, I automatically knew in my spirit that there was something off, you know, um, yeah. especially considering the outpour of what happened after the fact. And, you know, we're here 10 months later. So I think the people who, yeah. you know, have, have known about this and have been, a, have been watching the Palestinian cause for a while, obviously now most of us that are outside of that know that this did not start on October 7th. This started, mm. you know, in the early 1940s and then even before that in the 1800s, you know, like this has been such a long standing historical event. And, yeah. you know, the Nakba was the beginning of the terrorism towards Palestinian people. And so I really learned about the Nakba. I really dove into, you know, Palestinian um activists and their stories and i'm i'm a person who i like to listen to people's stories mm. their histories their families journeys and a lot of the time you know you there's so many refugees and so many immigrants here in america and i feel like our story as a country is a conglomeration of you know immigration and refugees and people coming to start over again because of the effects of empire and colonization around the world yeah. you know so yeah, I think that I just became really aware and I mean, watching what's been going on for the past 10 months has made my heart just sick with grief. Like I, I can't every single day I'm watching what's happening and I'm just like, I can't believe yeah. that we are doing this again and that we're watching this happen again. And that's not to say that it doesn't happen and hasn't been happening for a while. It's just it's so jarring the juxtaposition of the truth with the propaganda, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's very interesting, actually. I mean, what you're saying also about like your, your journey into Palestine, because from what you just told me, it seems to have been very quick. I mean, you two, you know, it's important to start to want to learn first, right? To want to get in a way your facts straight. But, um, but I feel for, for people and even more so for people with like, um, you know, a mic or people like, you know, or celebrities, it's always a very, very tricky journey. And I've been working with like famous people, like actors and, you know, f cultural figures for, for many years. And, and for some people, it take, you know, once they know the facts, it takes months when they finally speak out because of the repression, because of the censorship. Um, 
So it's very interesting that you actually very quickly got, in a way, that it was an injustice and something you had to speak about. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty clear on what is and isn't injustice. Like, I think that yeah. there's, there's unsurmountable proof and evidence of the terrorism that Palestinians have been experiencing for so many years. And I feel that way across the board on so many global issues. Um, and their source is the same, you know, the source yeah. of their pain and the source of their suffering is, you know, the same behemoth, which is, you know, Western um, hegemony and em empire and this complete insatiable greed of people who already have so much and are already so in control of everything. Um, yeah. And to me, the most important part of us moving forward as a collective is to acknowledge the ways in which our stories cross over one another's. And, you know, we all get different perspectives according to our traumas, you know? I'm Cuban mm. and my family's Cuban and they had their own personal experience with what happened in Cuba. But then you're able to look back at things from a different lens, the same way that many Jewish folks are able to look at what's happening in Palestine right now and be able to recognize it for what it is and that it's against their values. I, I have so much admiration for them to be able to see the truth of what yeah. is happening and to be able to speak to that, to have the courage to speak to that because it's super isolating when there's a certain narrative that's being fed to you, but then there's a whole nother truth in the history, in the true history of people's experiences and stories, you know? So I think that yeah, I think a part of my mission on this planet is to speak truth to power. Not all artists feel that way. Not all artists get into the current iteration of fame and music and like art. You know, things have been so consumed by capitalism and so drowned out. And um, so it's difficult for like many artists to realize their actual purpose on this planet. And I, I just really believe that we're alchemists and we are here to understand process and then help people understand the process you know whether that's through yeah, art yeah. speaking and i feel like i've always just had a, a an inclination to speak and to align myself as much as possible with with the the truth hmm. you know and you so do you feel like activism in a way is a is a social responsibility for for artists or people that have a privilege and a mic in a way i believe so for myself you know, I feel like I don't really get anywhere to tell people like you should be doing this because a lot of people do it. Don't do things out of fear. Don't do things yeah. out of security. Don't do things out of being literally uneducated about things. So they would rather not speak on things. And I respect that to a degree. You know, there's a part of me that's like there's insurmountable evidence. So if you care, you care. And if you don't, you don't, you know. And But to some people, their, their position of, of privilege is too um, difficult to give up. And I also understand that yeah. because the repercussions of speaking out are really serious. You know, like I've lost a whole bunch of stuff because of my, like, because of what I've been talking about and how I feel um, yeah. and being so vocal about it. So I understand, I understand what, these are our livelihoods and these are our lives that we have to maintain at the end of the day to survive in this, in this very brutal, construct that we're all living in you know we live in a world where we're watching genocide happen live and still people are still politicians and those in power with the ability to send mass weaponry are gaslighting us and telling us no that's not what you're seeing that's not true that's not what's happening even if again there's insurmountable evidence of what the truth is yeah. and palestinians have been filming their experience which is like soul crushing you know that they even have to show their most painful moments for us to believe them because so many people are lying you know like that that to me is heartbreaking and i feel like i don't know for me while i'm here i'm gonna do what i can but i know my heart's in the right place and i know history will vindicate because these are just truths yeah you know? i mean it's yeah it's very important what you just said you know history will vindicate uh because like i obviously understand that people have you know, a livelihood, they have to pay bills and, and it's their job. And they support but families, at the end of, support people yeah. themselves too, you know. 
But at the end of the day as well, you know, you, you will be remembered in history, you know, in regards to what you did for others and how you used your voice. And it's a, it's a choice, I guess, you have to make. And mm -hmm. I, again, I feel, you know, people are on a, on a journey and sometimes the journey are very straightforward. Sometimes, you know, it takes a while to get there. But, um, yeah. but I was wondering, like, are you, do you have discussions in like, you know, like, in the cultural world in the US or in Hollywood about what's happening in Gaza? Do you feel, um, what kind of response do you get if you talk about it and when you talk about it with other, with your peers? It depends. I tend to surround myself with people who are also very social justice oriented. So I, the conversations that I have with my personal peers and people that I have around me are all very aligned. And I also, I have no problem because I don't have like a personal stake in this conflict mm. you know what i mean i'm not arab i'm not jewish i'm not palestinian i'm not israeli you know in any kind of capacity so i feel like i'm able to kind of see things with this bird eye view of um unbiased energy so i'm also able to speak with you know those who challenge what i'm saying or those who don't agree with what i'm saying um in a way that's not um charged so much so i'm able to like discuss things with people and sometimes people are completely like bought out propagandized there's no saving them but there's yeah. a lot of people that i've spoken to that i've been able to be like hey actually that's not true hey actually this is the truth hey actually look at this article hey actually look at this ruling you know what i mean and and just kind of slowly but surely open up their minds in a way where they're like oh shit you know like that's actually yeah. i get what you're saying now you know so i i actually kind of enjoy that kind of discourse because i don't believe in the binary of good and bad I, I really believe that we're all very human and we are all kind of like little machines that are very susceptible to emotional manipulation. And that is what propaganda is. And that is what um, the way that social media has been set up in our lives. It is very um, triggering, you know, it's very like, yeah. let me let me pull you in and let me trigger you and let me make you say something emo from an emotional place or do something from an emotional place. And I feel like we've been being manipulated by these tech giants, these billionaires who own these tech companies, like, for example, Elon Musk, or like, yeah. for example, Zuckerberg, you know, like where they are actively thwarting the way people think because of these algorithms, algorithms, they keep people in these silos. So I don't really blame people all the time for what they think they believe. I more try to get to people's hearts, like, what is your heart telling you? And what do you actually, what are your values as a person, you know, because if your values are consistent, then you're able to see when things are wrong and when things are right. You know, you're able to see mm -hmm. killing a multitude of children who are obviously innocent and are not in any way, shape or form combat combatants. You know what I mean? Like we have to know that that's wrong. Collective punishment is wrong. That is an international law that we all came to an agreement on because of how horrific World War II was, you know, and how mm -hmm. horrific all of these wars have been. But also what these past 10 months have revealed to me more than anything is that, you know, the powers that be have orchestrated their blanket, their cover up for what they do behind the scenes. And this politeness, yeah. this fake, this faux politeness of, of just straight gaslighting. You know what I mean? Like, let's be civil. Let's not be violent while they commit some of the craziest yeah. violence that we've ever seen on the planet for profit. Because these, these senators that are bought by APAC and these people who are bought by APAC like, and who are overriding congressional rulings in order to send more and more and more destructive weapons, they all make money on the back end yeah. with their stock trades. You know what I'm saying? There's literally insider trading going on in the internal world. So as long as we have corruption, I'm going to talk about it. You know what I mean? I'm a, I, I want to talk about it because yeah. I don't believe that we'll get to a better world unless we talk about it. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the, this, in a way, state, uh, these people, uh, including, obviously, the, the arms manufacturers and stuff, want a state of permanent war because they make huge profit, you know. They and so the, money. Yeah. And the arms trade, I mean, one of my very good friends is called Andrew Feinstein. He's a, he's a, um, he's a former South, Africa, uh, South African um you know, he was on the government of uh, Mandela and his, his, um, his expertise is on the arms trade. And he said like the, the arms trade industry 
is the most corrupt in the world. There's so much money and so much corruption. I so corruption. It. So yeah. I see it. You know, we're all we're always on the side on both sides. We're always on both mm. sides because that's the most sales. You know. Yeah, yeah. And it's um. I want to ask you something now about coping because you you said it like at the beginning and stuff. We I feel we've been living under some kind of collective trauma over the last nearly 10 months now. Uh, and it's, um, and I've seen around me people collapse. I've seen people go on burnout. I've seen people like cry every day. Um, how yeah. do we cope in a way as, as, as human beings is, is a very important question. And in a way, self-care is also very important in, in these situations, right? Yeah. But I, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I watched, uh, I, sorry, I want to say, I, I watched your, your interview that you gave about five months ago on Middle East Eye. Uh, it was following the, the release of your song, uh, The mm -hmm. Day the World, the World Blows Up. Blows up and you yeah. said, yeah, and you said that in a way you wrote the song to, to make people feel seen and feel hugged and not, not alone. And um, this was five months ago. Um, and... How do you feel in a way? How do you cope? That's a heavy question. Um, I, I don't want to say this, but like, I feel a little desensitized, if I'm being honest. Like, I feel numb in a lot of ways mm. to the situation. I cry all the time when I see new stories of the horrors that are going on. I'm like crying right now. Um, But it's like a part of me had to be like, I can't, I can't only live in that grief because then I can't yeah. do what I gotta do. And I literally spiraled. I spiraled so hard and I was so sad and I was so disconnected from myself, disembodied. And because it, it actually is driving me crazy a little bit that like we have access to the knowledge in our hands and we're all watching it but we still can't do anything about it. Because I remember growing up, reading about the Holocaust and reading about you know atrocities that have happened, learning about Nelson Mandela, learning about Martin Luther King and, and, and the civil rights movement. Like all of, I was so inspired by all of these things. And I was taught them in such a way where it was like, these are things of the past that we've gotten better from and that we're growing. And we, as a collective are moving towards this. And it feels like every illusion has finally shattered for me. And I feel like for a lot of us and watching the world without the illusion is terrifying. It's really terrifying because it's just a bunch of sociopaths with high grade weapons and an insatiable greed that is so selfish and so destructive. And when I say sociopath, I mean it in such a way where they can't even take accountability for it. And there's no, I don't see them stopping. You know what I mean? I don't see them stopping and they never have, you know, if I really think about it. I've always been in a very privileged position um, being born in America and, and being born in the circumstance that I was. You know, I think that I've lived in, a, in so much of a bubble and, and doing what I've done. I've lived in so much of a, of a privileged, protective bubble. And then just seeing the fact that even when so many people are mobilized for the truth, they can still lie to us and they can still keep doing it. That, that shit is, is definitely discouraging in ways that my heart is trying to cope with. I, I make art, I write songs, I write poems, I write in general, like I just journal my feelings. And then I sit and I cry and I go in nature and I ask her why, and I'm like, what are we doing? And for me, something that's been really therapeutic is getting involved with the land wherever I can. So like, you know, helping plant new seeds and helping connect with other people that see the world that I see where we don't have yeah. to do this to each other. You know, I think that that's where I'm finding my coping is like in understanding my role in creating the new earth because we're watching paradigms die right now. We're watching the death of this kind of reality um, from a cosmic level, you know? That's what I believe anyway. And it's darkest before the dawn type energy, but we're going to see everything. Everything is being exposed for what it is and what it is straightforwardly, you know? 
There's no more hiding. There's no more two party system. There's no more duopoly. There's no more. You know what I mean? We know now like your pockets are fed by the same people and you're all making money off of everything that's being done. So, you know, I think I'm, I'm that awareness is as terrifying and heartbreaking as it is inspiring to find other people who think like me and think like us and create this new earth for real, you know, and dedicate ourselves to that as much as we can. I couldn't agree more uh, on yeah every, everything you've just said, and that's also how I'm trying to remain sane, yeah. and in, and kind of hopeful and and optimistic, because um, um, I do believe and that what we are experiencing right now with these sociopaths, and when you talked about sociopaths, I remember um, Madeleine Albright, you know, the former Secretary of State in the U.S. after the Iraq War. When a journalist told her up to 500,000 kids have died in Iraq because of the war, do you still think this was justified? And she said with like a blank face, yes. Tony Blair in the UK said he'll do it again because God told him, you know. So these people Their God are is sick. Always asking you know. them to kill people. It's really weird. Of course. Like it's, My God doesn't so, like us killing each yeah. other. Actually, one of the Ten Commandments is thou shall not kill. Um, That's my, one, yeah. one of the main ones. What what hypo you know hypocrisy it's it's but but uh, so I it's, do believe that yeah it's it's absurd and that's what sort of drives people crazy because they see it and I think that's, we are you know I feel like low key they want us to go crazy like I feel like that hypocrisy is kind of the point too because mm. it's like when you're you know like the concept of narcissism it's like you know this person is constantly blank faced abusing you but they'll never admit to their fault. They'll never yeah. admit they're wrong because on a cognitive level, they can't really see it. But I feel like that psychological warfare is part of the process, you know, because mm. it makes you question your intention. It makes you question, am I evil because I don't yeah. want them to do this stuff? Like, am I really evil? Well, I'm losing opportunities and I'm being villainized and I can't find work. And, you know, people are telling me that I, I want, I'm genocidal because I'm saying that I want people to be free. Like, how... Yeah. How are you dropping bombs on kids, not genocidal, but me saying I want these children to be free and their own land is is then genocide like that whole yeah. mind fuckery is just I'm sorry. I don't know if I can curse, but it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's yeah. part of it because it when you question your sanity as a victim of these systems, like that's part of it. It's the psychological warfare to keep you subdued and keep you in a space where you're disempowered and you don't feel like anyone believes you or you don't feel like you have a community of of sound people who are really there for you you know and it's easy mm. to get lost in that especially in the silos of social media because you know some people actually literally haven't heard about all the atrocities going on because their algorithm doesn't feed them that you know yeah. because that's not what they they watch or not what they think about most often and all of that is is connected you know like that i i feel like it's all psychological warfare to keep us as disconnected and disempowered from one another as possible. Because the second that we wake up and realize that we're the majority and that we're actually people with morals and hearts and like wanting peace are the majority of people on this planet. Once we realize that it's a wrap, you know? I think it's a wrap. I mean, I, I can't find any, any other, any, you know, a better way to wrap up. I, w I was going to say, uh, I do feel that, you know, it's like what we're experiencing now is the, old world crumbling i'm not sure how long it's going to take but i can feel it you know yeah. these this old sociopathic world crumbling because we live we're going through a moment as you said of extreme cl clarity it's so clear you know there's no you know veil no or curtains masks. anymore yeah no masks. more masks yeah And the idea, of course, you know, the sort of divide and rule strategy and, and the and, you know, the power, the powers in place who wants to make people feel alone, you know, and that's why when you, you said about the song, you know, it's about making feel people less alone, right? Because people often think they're the only one to think this way, right? And then they realize, oh, actually, two, two doors down the street my neighbor thinks the same and then they start to organize and then they feel the collective power and then as you said it's a wrap um it's a wrap it's, a wrap. it's so powerful dude when i went to the palestinian protests out here in la like the 
the collective spirit of freedom and truth and camaraderie and love in the air, like no matter who you were, no matter where you're from, no matter what color you are, and that solidarity amongst all of us, that is so beautiful and so powerful and so much more potent than fear. And that's why they need us in that fear state. They need us in that fear state. They need us to see all this destruction. They need us to feel grief because then we become disembodied and we can't remember that joy and love that we feel when we're actually in each other's presence and creating these new worlds together. And that's what we, I think that's just what we have to hold on to is like that everyone who has that whisper in their heart that there's a better way and there's a better world here ready to be carved out by those who see it. The more of us find each other, the more of us talk with each other and organize with each other, like you said, you know, the more, the faster it'll all flow, you know, the faster the wave, the waves will come and go. Because like you said, it is dying, but this is a, a behemoth that has been here for thousands of years. You know, this is not new. The, you know, these empires have been building off of one another and, you know, making their little mini versions and expanding for a long time now. Like when you go from England to the United States to Israel, it's all, they're all connected. Um, and like kind of tentacles of this idea of siphoning and extracting resources from places that aren't your own, you know, and, mm. and not caring about the life that it costs. And that's done. Like there's an imbalance in the world and like either we're done, humans are done or, or this concept is done, you know? And I feel like a lot of us would rather that the concept is done than our species, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Lauren, thanks. Uh, thanks uh, a million, as they say in, uh, in Ireland. Um, <laughs> it was uh, enlightening and, and, and so, um, you know, we need, yeah again collective collective power and, and 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 love and i feel like you know i've never felt so you mentioned this demo in la or something um i've been to a few demos i live in brussels i've been to a few in paris in london i've never felt you know after the demo or during the demo you feel so en energized like, and and yeah. you know I'm yeah talking right now like chills up my spine doc yeah 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 because the potential energy in these spaces is so potent. Like we can mm. really make new worlds together for real. Yeah. I believe it. Let's do it. Thank you so let's, much. For let's do it. Uh, thanks, Lauren. Amazing. Hey, I was wondering, actually, do you speak Arabic? No, no, I speak Spanish. Cause I have, no, because I've heard you say Le Chaza and Shikjara and, Shikjara, and I was like, it's, you know, she's, she's have, got the Arabic. Some, yeah. yeah, I have some. Yeah. Um, some friends and Arabic friends like who speak it fluently okay. um, and so I kind of learned from that I also so pick it up. yeah yeah I like to pick up the way people say things you know yeah, I yeah, yeah. try to say them the way other they, they say them naturally but That's I speak nice. that, yeah. so it kind of helps me yeah yeah you know with the with the her and the, yeah the, exactly <laughs> hey thanks Lauren thanks again thanks.